Hello, Greater Portland family and friends. Thank you for tuning in to this week's GPBC website update. The staff and I pray that you're doing well. God gave us a wonderful day last Sunday with missionaries Steve and Cindy Rosencrantz. If you missed it, you can go to our website and view firsthand on YouTube. You will be blessed. We're excited about hosting our third guest for our missions emphasis next month with missionary to Honduras, Brandon Lane and his family. They will be with us on Sunday, November the 22nd. So mark your calendar and we'll keep you informed. If you've not yet checked out our new missions kiosk in the foyer, please do so. On a huge 65 inch touchscreen, you can get an update of our 100 missionaries around the world. And above the kiosk, you will see our theme and statement that missions is the heartbeat of God. Let me say that's true, but it's also the heartbeat of Greater Portland Baptist Church. Please pray that we will be a blessing to these faithful servants of God. And it's our prayer that we might not only continue to faithfully pray for them, but financially continue to support over a hundred missionaries around the world. But that will uh, be a blessing to you only if you're involved. So I hope you'll help us and be praying about it. We continue to meet every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. and every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. under the governor's and the CDC guidelines. Our deaf are also meeting with Pastor Bob Boyd in the Deaf Auditorium, the Super Church for our children with Pastor Scott McFeeters and Teen Church Pastor Andrew Watson is going well. At this time, until further notice, we're not scheduling Sunday school or Sunday night service, but please continue to pray for our members that are on the front line of the pandemic, serving in the medical field in different capacities. You know, if you're not careful, uh, you will um, no doubt hear these names and, and perhaps you will get accustomed to me saying them, but they represent men and women in our church that desperately need God's protection upon them. Pray for uh, Rosalie Liggett, for Olga Arvello, for Barbara Hurd, Sergio Cruz, Rufus and Dee Johnson, Mary Strickland, Natalie Weaver, Jessica Johnston, Brian Lockhart, Dr. Bob Sason, and the Good News Clinic. Please pray for God's protection over them as well as upon their families. By the way, pray for our bus captains and our van and adult and teen children, Sunday school teachers, as we endeavor to stay in touch with all of our families and their children. Got good news, Brother Rick Tarazis and the prison ministry are rejoicing. The doors are starting to reopen and uh, with Zoom and video ministry and praise the Lord, souls have been saved almost every week. As a church, we have partnered with him to provide the care packages in an effort to meet some of the personal needs of the teens in prison. I'm excited that we were able to prepare those and uh, Brother Rick Tarazis is gonna be able to deliver them personally in McLaren. And so we're thankful for that. Thank you for giving to make this possible. After almost 10 months of the COVID-19 pandemic, the thought of upcoming holidays reminds us of God's blessing during 2020. While it may be hard to believe, Thanksgiving is just a little more than a month away. At GPBC, we have a tradition of giving an annual Thanksgiving offering to demonstrate our love and gratitude for all the Lord has done for us here at GPBC. I think you would agree that if anyone should be thankful for all that God has done and given us, it should be our church and ourselves as individuals. We call this offering our others offering because everything that we give in this offering is going to go to others. In Acts 20, 35, Jesus said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Now, I know that God is going to bless as we partner together in this sacrificial effort. The Lord is impressed on the hearts of your deacons and myself to designate this year's offering to go toward Church Planning America under the leadership of Dr. Charles Shoemaker. This offering will help dozens of local church planners that desperately need help, especially after all that has happened in 2020. Will you prayerfully ask the Lord 
what He would have you to give towards this other's offering. By giving in this offering, you'll be partnering with Church Plan in America and these church planners. And by the way, several that are right here in our own backyard of Washington and Oregon. So I'm asking every member to reflect over the past year, to pray, and then bring your 2020 offering, Thanksgiving offering, on or before the Tuesday evening Thanksgiving service on November the 24th of this year. Now remember that this is over and above your regular tithe and missions and dream offering. If you have any questions, feel free to talk to me or any of our staff or deacons. I know this will involve a sacrifice for all of us, but compared to all that God has done for us, it really is the least that we should do. Thank you once again for being a faithful steward here at Greater Portland. God continues to use each of you to meet the needs of your church through your faithful giving of your tithe, missions, and dream offering. Several projects are being done that the dream has made a huge difference, and you are making um, a tremendous difference in that faithful offering. Tomorrow, we will meet once again on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We'll continue our series on caring for one another. I will be speaking on the command that Jesus gave to us to bear one another's burden. Again, if you're not personally able to come, please tune in to our live stream service. During each of our services, we really do try to keep you informed and up to date about our church family. Please pray for Bill and Barbara McFeeders. Uh, their uh, son-in-law, Mark Brazier, went home to be with the Lord. Pastor Brad and his um, mom went back for the service this past weekend. Even as I speak, they are flying back. So please pray for traveling safety. And uh, thank the Lord that Pastor Brad was able to uh, officiate at the memorial service. And I am excited because I know God used him in a powerful way. Pray for Elizabeth Coombs, who has started her plasma infusion. Praise the Lord, there were no complications with her dental needs involving her infusion. It looks like they're going to be able to continue forward with both, and that is a real blessing. Pray also for Mamie Carter, who has recently had surgery and is now in a care center, so please pray for her. Also for Gracie Dillette, for Brother Rick Hoverkamp, Joan Harrington, Trinidad Gallegos, Brother George Stevenson, Jan and Elaine Huxel. I shared with the church Sunday that Jan received a wonderful update. His numbers were strong and stable, and we're rejoicing with them. Pray for Al and Janice Sanders, uh, Dick Culberson. Brother Clint Hine has returned to the post office. Even though it's light duty, he's back to work. Pray for Lori Hoke and Charlotte Toman after her surgery. For Elsie Harrington's mom, Elena Salak, she has been moved now from the hospital. They were going to send her to a care center, but because there were no visitors, and uh, Elsie just did not want to put her mom in that type of a situation, she said, would you please release her to come home to my house? And they agreed. So she is now at home. Please pray. Uh, for the family, and thank God for this uh, opportunity to spend time with her mom. Please pray that the antibiotics will work and God will continue to give healing. Brother Steve Pico had a heart procedure last Friday and is doing great. Uh, what could have been a, two, a double bypass really ended up with a single stent, and he is growing stronger every day, and for that we're grateful. Continue to pray for he and Linda. You know, whether someone is in the hospital or scheduled for surgery or even those that are in bereavement over the loss of a loved one, we really want to keep you informed so as a church family, we can pray for one another. If you have a prayer request, please call in to the church office and let us know. Let us also continue to pray for our leaders. President Donald Trump, Oregon Governor Kate Brown, Washington Governor Inslee, and our mayors and our policemen. I want to remind you that voters guides are available to all that would like one in the foyer of our church. If you need one, we can provide them for you. Just let us know. Pray for the 
presidential election that now is just seven days away on November the 3rd, Tuesday, please pray for God's will to be done. Scripture says the lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Praise the Lord for the approval and the appointment now of the new Supreme Court Justice, Amy Coney Barrett. Please pray that the Lord will bless her, give her wisdom, and pray also for the protest and that the violence here in Portland will end, as well as across our nation. Please pray with us for our country, for our cities, for our churches, and for our congregation, and for our children. Can I remind you also to pray for our pastor friend Mark Watkins over in Pendleton. Please pray for them. COVID has hit them and they are struggling through this quarantine and the process. Please pray if you would for the Berean Baptist Church and our dear friend Brother Watkins. Our teachers at GPCA are faithfully serving and we continue the online classes. They're teaching half days Monday through Friday and we ask that you'll please pray for our teachers who are making a huge commitment and financial sacrifice to remain as part-time teachers. Please also pray for our administrator, our students, and our families. We believe with God's help, we can and we will, by His grace, get through this. For eight months, I have tried to remind you that we are not going back. We are going forward. And in order to do that, we must be faithful to our Savior, to the Scriptures, to our church, and to our mission to witness and share the gospel with others. So let me one more time encourage you to please be fervent in your personal witness to others and take those divine appointments to invite lost friends and loved ones uh, to come to Christ or to attend Sunday morning or Wednesday night services with you. You never know when your witness could be just what would God would use to bring a friend or a loved one to Jesus Christ. Rest assured of our love and our prayers for you. I look forward to seeing you soon in our next service. God bless you, and I want you to know I'm honored to be your pastor.